Well, a very warm yellow tinted welcome to all you Kung Fu kids. Welcome to another episode of Karate Corner. Today's movie makes less sense than any of his movies so far. I've watched it twice, and I still can't figure out who everybody is, if they're good, if they're bad. I don't know. It's like the board game Clue, only we don't have any pieces. The movie I speak of is called The Foreigner. Why is it called that? Well, the same reason as other movies are named China Salesman, Gut Shot Straight, or Urban Justice. He just throws a dart at a big old dart board of names, and that's the movie. So let's get into it, because this is Red Eye Reviews. Alrighty, you know the drill by now. Let's get that plot synopsis. And believe me when I say this plot is so simple that it doesn't make any sense. Like at all. So many people doing things and some are bad. Well, maybe they're good. I don't know. Well, I'll try my best. Jonathan Cold is a former deep cover operative who now freelances as a deliverer of high risk packages. Who is Jonathan Cold, you ask? Well, five minutes in and we see a way too attractive lady, so I can only assume he's nearby. There he is. If you really love me, you be jealous. Please don't, Stephen. So while John is preparing for his father's funeral, Alex Marquette asks him to take on an assignment. Him and his buddy Dunoir agree to the job, and they eat an entire deep-fried pig? What is it, like noon? Dude, France is awesome. The job is to take a package from France to a wealthy dude in Germany, but when they go to this farmhouse to pick up the package, they get attacked, and Seagal chooses the worst hiding place of all time. Ten years ago, buddy, you would have fit behind there, but those days are behind you. So John fights the bad guys and goes back to his employer, saying that it looked like a setup. So now Seagal believes his boss is trying to kill him. The boss insists he isn't, but then Seagal changes course, wild cards it out, and leaves this note. Whoa, okay, give me a second. I, that may be real dizzy. But yeah, he now claims that Dunoir knew the bad guys. On the way to his dad's funeral, John talks to another old guy in an airport. I think this is his old boss. But then out of the blue, he's like, uh, karate. And he walks away, meets up with his brother and heads to the funeral. Meanwhile, Dunoir thinks the employer wants to kill him now for being tied to the first fight. I mean, I honestly don't know his incentive here. He somehow thinks he can disguise himself if he holds a food tray. So what better way to do that than just kill the servant? (laughs) Nailed that death fall, by the way. Very natural. Then he walks in and it works. These dudes saw him like yesterday, didn't they? Oh, you're a servant delivering food? Well, look, let's take your guns first. Why a servant has so many guns? We don't know. We ain't we ain't paid to ask questions. Then he talks to the employer and just decides to kill that guy too with a secret gun that the guards didn't find. Those are some really, really bad henchmen. Then he just doubles down or triples down. He steals this guy's car. Hey! Yeah, why not? Kill that guy too. Also, the camera editing in this movie... Uh, yeah. Oh, what has Seagal been doing this whole time? Just making some phone calls in the dark. May I ask his call name? Uh, no thanks. I'll call back later. That's a great answer. May I ask who's calling? Uh, no. No thank you. Then we cut to the United States, and I guess these guys used to work with Jonathan Cold, and these guys also know about the package he's delivering for some reason. So this dude goes to Europe to kill him, and I think take the package. Everyone wants Seagal's package, is what I'm getting at. So Seagal gets to Germany and stalks the rich dude's mansion, who asks for the package. Why doesn't he just go in and give him the package? I don't know. We don't know. But Seagal leaves, goes back to the hotel room. What the hell happened here? Hmm, nice. Very natural. I could really feel your concern with the situation. This dude demands Stephen takes him to where the package is, because he also knows about the mysterious box. I can only assume he, like, took a crash course for this accent because he sounds like this. Asphyxiation, thereby cutting off oxygen to the brain. So they go to the train station where he hid the package. For your fucking rat. And the editor must have gotten fed up with how slow Steven walks. That's my only explanation for that. So they get to the package and they go to the bathroom to open it and it's a bomb. Yeah, that's right. Steven set a trap up with a fake package just in case this exact scenario were to go down. So now Steven's suspicious the guy who wants the package is trying to kill him and take the package that Steven's supposed to give to him. Probably should have given it to him yesterday. You know, Steven probably just left one of those, sorry, we couldn't deliver your package slips. Damn UPS. So Seagal sneaks into the rich man's house. That's some 
pretty quick moving there, buddy. You're looking real good. Did you lose 40 pounds? Nice, man. Oh, wait, no. Gain it back, huh? Well, win some, lose some. Oh, also the American dude shows up in Germany and checks into the same hotel under Steven's name. So Dunoir shows up and he's on a killing spree at this point. So he just wants to kill Steven too. Well, maybe. Maybe he's turning a new leaf. He didn't kill this lady. No, oh, no, spoke too soon. Well, that is his character. Kill everybody and smoke cigarettes. Can't fault you on that, buddy. So he goes upstairs and tries to kill Steven, but it's a surprise. It's the American with a shotgun. So Dunoir is dead, blasted out a window. And the American makes a call to his boss on the coolest phone ever. Do you guys remember how cool these were? So now our good guy American goes looking for Seagal to kill him? So I think that makes Seagal a bad guy. Unless this guy's a bad guy, but... I mean, he hasn't done anything bad yet, so we'll see. He does, however, see the car Steven drives and gives chase, only to find out that more than one person in Germany can own a silver Mercedes. God damn it, dude, you too? Oh, gotta move your name over to the bad guy column now, so thanks for that. At this point, Steven is like, what the hell is in this package? Everyone's trying to kill me, including the dude I'm trying to give it to. This Amazon Prime shit's getting so dangerous. We see the box contains the black box from a plane crash and conveniently enough, every shred of evidence anyone would ever need to convict this old rich man of shooting this plane down with a missile. I don't know who put all of this together, but thank God it's in some trusty hands like Steven Seagal. He's going to take good care of it. And he ruined it. God damn it, dude. Really? Why? What, were you actually expecting files to be inside? We got 30 years worth of files right here in this computer that are going to bring you down. <laughs> the finals go and when steven leaves he runs into the american you know you kind of look like ray charles okay dude you can't just say whatever comes out of your mouth buddy so now the american is like take me to the package and steven's like oh sure uh wink wink i'll take you to the totally not a trap package i set up all across this city uh just drive me to this abandoned building out in the middle of nowhere yeah that's where it is sure yeah here it is here's the desk Barbecue. Dude, great one-liner, man. I was wondering if you would sneak one into this movie. God, you're so cool. So now the American's dead, but we think he was a bad guy, so we're happy with that. Oh, and then Dunoir shows up. Wait, did the writers forget that they killed you like 20 minutes ago? It, uh, anyways, he found Steven somehow, and he wants the package. But this lady opens the door, distracting him, so Steven knocks him out and leaves. I'm sure he's not going to come back a third time. Oh, and real quick, this lady's the rich guy's wife. She also wants the package, which every one of their mamas want this package at this point, so that should be no surprise to you. But she's a woman, so obviously Seagal stands no chance, and he instantly trusts her. So he shows her the black box, which changed size, shape, and color. So, yeah, that's what we call in the movie biz dropping the ball. I also suggest you figure out something to tell your daughter about who I am and why you're going with me here. Okay. Goodbye. Solid voiceover work there, buddy. Very natural. Then, let's make it even more complicated. Steven's brother gets asked by Steven's old boss to bring Steven in. And his brother's like, cool. So Steven and his brother go to dinner, and his brother plays it real cool. Yeah, very good. Very natural. But his brother gets cold feet, and then they try to get away from the people that want to arrest Steven. But I'm sure it's going to take some pretty clever tricks to get away from there. We lost them. You lost them? Dude, they walked outside and turned left. Okay, well, they got away. So Steven goes to meet up with his old boss, who also wants the package. But surprise, surprise, he already has the tape somehow. Oh, well, that tape's not going to do any good for anything anymore. Well, yeah, no shit, Steven. You ruined it earlier in the movie. So Steven tells the guy he messed up coming after him, and he goes to walk away. Wait, Steven, didn't you forget something? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Be like all the other bad guys in the movie. So Steven goes to break into the rich guy's house who wants the package. And honestly, I don't know why he just doesn't give him the box. Like, his job is to deliver things, so just do it. Anyone want to guess who shows up? Yeah, Benoit. He's not dead. But the two of them are like, let's break into this mansion to yell at this rich guy together. So they just team up really fast. That makes sense. But then they get inside, and yeah, same old killer trying to kill things. Also, the camera shots in this movie are really, really bad. <laughs> Anyways, we go into another mansion -y room with a desk in the middle of it, and we meet the rich guy. We have ten minutes left in this movie, but we finally see him. Cool. He's like, give me the package. And Steven's like, no, I like your wife better. I'm gonna give it to her. And he just leaves, and then Dunoir shows up, 
again, literally can't die, this guy. And he talks to the rich guy. And of course they know each other. Yeah, apparently they've been working together to kill Steven the whole time. And I know it kind of feels like I'm doing a poor job describing this movie, but I swear to you, I'm giving you all the information. He then loves killing so much, he just kills the rich guy. And we'll rewind that. I rewatched this scene about five times. It's like some weird backward gun thing. And it hits the rich guy. At a, I really can't figure this out. If any of my subscribers know about weird guns, I know it's like a very niche thing to question. Let me know what this is. Steven then goes to get the hot wife and her daughter to take them to safety. And some bros show up in some sweet matching jackets. But Steven gets there. Shoots, misses, flail about, miss again, a little more flailing. There you go, finally got him. And with everybody safe, they all hug each other. Even though Steven doesn't know these people and has never met this little girl before. We cut to France. You can tell it's France by the baguette sticking out of the grocery bag. They walk downtown and some dude tries to kidnap the little girl right in front of them. And then he just leaves. That's strange. So Steven takes this as a sign that they must be being followed. He orders them to go hide in a cafe while he checks outside. He goes back inside and they're gone. So then he thinks maybe she went to the apartment. He goes to the apartment and who does he find? Done fucking war. Okay, do us all a favor, Steven. Just shoot this guy somewhere besides the middle of his chest, please. Look, he even wants to go. Look how excited he is. Steven, this, this dude's been shot so many times. I know you're the strongest man who's ever lived. But there is no way that karate chop killed him. Fade away to black, really? Okay, I mean, he's going to come back again, I promise you. So I guess Steven finds a letter the lady left him, and it says how she used him to escape her rich husband, and she took all the evidence with her, and then we just end here. I mean, this came out of nowhere. The movie's over. And this goes on and on and back and forth for 90 or so minutes until the movie just sort of ends. That is brilliant! Well, that was a confusing ride. The good news is now we never have to watch that movie again. So, on to our favorite segment, Red Eye Reacts. Just want to talk, that's all. Uh, Could they not oil that escalator just a little bit? I wouldn't think Paris suits you. Hey, beautiful place, man. I love this. Yeah, a real beautiful place. Maybe could use a tiny bit of decoration. Or maybe an end table for your phone there on the floor. Thereby cutting off oxygen to the brain. And when the brain dies, Mr. Weber, we His neck is so thick, I feel like he's just gonna swing and dangle around for a yeah, really long time. That's what it is. That's, that's what it is. Oh, 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 Frank, it's not gonna work for you. Your neck's too thick, Tie buddy. Tie a chair to me. Tie a chair to me. Easy. Easy. I know it looks like I edited this. I didn't. Okay, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but the gun in your left hand will defeat the purpose of the one in your right hand. Wait, where did the dead lady go? Did this lady just drag the dead one into like a closet and start her shift? I mean, she's dead, but I need this job. You know I'm not a talkative man, but I'll say this. This should be on a t-shirt. This is Steven Seagal's motto. I know I'm not a talkative man, but I will say this. That, it's perfect. A lot of good it should do now. All the real evidence was destroyed. Oh, I assure you, this evidence is beyond repair as well. And fun fact, at the end of the movie, that is a regular-sized boat. Okay, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this. Please subscribe if you haven't. Share the video with some friends. Talk about movies in general. I don't know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the bell. Hit your computer. We'll see you next time with a movie called Out for a Kill, where he's a university professor and he gets involved in a Chinese cocaine deal. That, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to watch that with you all, but until then, stay happy and stay healthy.